Welcome. It's Sandy Wiley. Welcome to my mental health channel, Fifty Shades of Black and White, where I wipe away the stigma of mental illness by talking about my own personal experiences um, as a patient for almost 20 years having borderline personality disorder. I talk about narcissistic personality disorder. My mom had that. Um, and I my therapists have that. I talk about schizophrenia, which my dad had, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, panic attacks, and a plethora of other mental health topics. But I only come on as a former patient. I am not a therapist. <laughs> I do not hold a degree in psychology, and I cannot give you a professional opinion. I can only give you um, my opinion from my own personal experiences. Um, and so it's not, it's only my opinion. Um, it's not, it's my, you know, from what I've been through. And it can be different from yours, and that's fine. We can agree to disagree, but I only ask you to be very kind, um, considerate, and respectful is the word in the comments. Respectful to me respectful to other people, and respectful to yourself. If you like what you see, then give it a thumbs up. <laughs> and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It's 100% free. Now we're going to talk about narcissistic personality disorder again today. And the topic today is, are you arm candy or a trophy wife to a, narciss a narcissist? Or have you been in your past arm candy or a trophy wife? Now this can this applies to men with female narcissists. I don't want you to think that I'm just talking about male narcissists here. Because I grew up with a mother who was a convert covert, covert a narcissist. And also my best friend for 12 years was a narcissist. So I'm not just, you know, pointing the finger at guys. You're the, you, you know, you're the narcissist. I'm talking about men and women. Now, narcissists pick partners that boost their ego, make them seem glamorous, decorate them, let them shine. They, they use partners to nourish their ego, providing them with a positive self-image. Like, you know, like that, that ugly old man on the beach with his belly sticking out to here. And he has a beautiful babe, you know, <laughs> with a model figure, flat um, washboard belly, <laughs> um, like 20 something on his arm. That's arm candy. Or the guy who, you know, marries the $500,000 um, a year Harvard lawyer. <laughs> who's just like drop dead gorgeous and successful um or you know um the woman who um go for the the football star you know like in high school right those cliques and everything those snotty girls um they don't really care about you know nice guys like my husband they'll say oh that guy's a geek that guy's a nerd. You know, they want to be on the arm of the football, um, the lead football player at the on the college team, you know, who's like six foot four, you know, handsome looking and, you know, star football player. And they want to be on his arm, okay? They don't want to be on the guys with the glasses and, you know, um, with the greasy hair and zits who, you know, is a bookworm. They don't want that. Oh, that would make them look bad. See, the narcissists only think about how are you going to make them look? How are you going to boost their ego? That's why I say arm candy or a trophy wife. Those are the terms I know. But it also applies to female narcissists who, you know, might be um, married to a doc, a surgeon, you know, oh, my husband's a surgeon. We live in like a million, two, two million dollar home in Newton. Um, 
you know, I drive whatever, you know, I don't even know the, the high-end cars out there. <laughs> I just have a Honda, you know, Sonata. I don't, I don't know about those things, all right? But yeah, the big rings and everything. By the way, if anyone has ever looked at this ring and says, oh, wow, that's a good size ring. This is a cubic zirconia, okay? This is not a real diamond. I just want y'all to know that. Um, I did have a diamond. Um, my husband bought me a diamond. It was much smaller when we, when we got engaged. Um, it wasn't, you know, humongously expensive or big. It was small. It was like a half carat. And he put it on layaway. I mean, he, you know, got credit and paid for it over time, you know. Um, we went through a lot of struggles financially. And unfortunately, I had to sell that during one of our financial um, struggles for, for cash. And I never replaced the diamond. Instead, I said, you know what? It was oval. I like round stones better. So I'm just telling you this. So I just got, I bet a lot of people won't eat. I bet if you saw me and, and I know the light isn't that, I'll forget it. You know, I'm not going to bother with it. But it, I think this is like a two carat diamond size, but it's a cubic zirconia. But you know, these people with the mink, um, the minks, you know, the real minks and everything, they don't care about animal rights or whatever. They got to have the big, long mink coats or the rabbit furs and the diamonds they're married to the doctors you know you get my point all this stuff to boost their ego right positive self-image holds the pieces of narcissist identity together similar to a skeleton that holds the various parts of our body Narcissists set high value on themselves, on themselves, not you. They want to be seen with the, you know, high influential people, right? Because it makes them look important, right? They want to be in those circles of high influential, rich, rich, famous people because it makes them look important. Narcissists are competent and efficient, not warm. Narcissists don't need to be compassionate, tender, or faithful. That's why most of them are cheaters, liars, and cheats. Your liars and cheats out there are narcissists. They will not take care of you. And clo closeness is an area that narcissists really enter. Not surprisingly, Narcissists' relationships typically do not last long. Very soon, they will look for a new relationship in which they can shine again. Let me tell you this. To a narcissist, it's all about the chase, the thrill of the hunt, okay? The thrill of the hunt. Once they have you, then they're easily bored, you know? They're bored. It's the thrill of the hunt for them. That's why they do the love bombing in the beginning to get you hooked. But then, once they got the trophy, then they're easily bored. It's the thrill of the chase. They have to go out again and get a new narcissistic supply. See, this is why their relationships don't last. All right. We found that narcissists view objects mostly as trophies, they, similar to deer antlers, buffalo horns, or bear skins, you know, for a big game hunter. The more magnificent, the harder to hunt, and the rarer the catch, the more prestige the conqueror gets from the trophy. You land that doctor. You land that rock star. You land that, you know, football player if you're in high school or, um, you see what I'm saying? This is why I'm talking about that they do this for themselves to boost themselves up. You know, you see it all the time. But then you say, well, why does that, you know, that person fall for someone like that? It's all in their childhood. Everything comes back to your childhood, okay? 
the psychology of why someone falls for and i said it's very easy to fall for them because they'll they'll go all non-stops okay for something they want until until they get it okay they will go all non-stops so and then when they have it it's just like, you know, they treat pe people like objects. You're an object to them. Once they have you, then they get bored. Just like, you know, think of a rich person. Once they buy this car, then drive it around, then it's boring. They got to buy another car. And then, oh, that's boring. And then they got to buy another car. It's just like with women. Once they've got that notch on the bedpost, then they got to get another notch and another notch, you know. And this is why I had like a friend... Um, it was my husband's friend, Steve, and we became friends, too. He was friends with both of us. And in his wallet, he had a picture. Pictures. What am I saying? A picture. He had pictures of the most drop-dead, gorgeous babes, you know. And this is my friend, Mary. This is my friend, Janet. This is my friend, Lisa. This is my friend, Karen. Like a, you know, like a deck of cards. He'd have this in his wallet. And I said, wow, Steve, those are gorgeous. And why did he have them? Because they made him look good. Now, the funny thing is about this, none of these girls in his wallet of pictures who were gorgeous, none of them were his girlfriend. They were all his buddy's girls. You see? He was the guy that all the girls, oh, you know, Whenever they had a problem, oh, Steve would be right there to listen, you know. And he was basically friend-zoned because he, I tried to set him up with one of my friends, Maria, and she wasn't interested. She said he's too short. This guy was probably like 5'3". And a lot of my friends did not like short men. Now, short women, men like short women like me. Men like every type of woman, really. Short, medium, tall. You know, I don't think men really. But some women are, are snooty. And they don't like men who are short. Like, I'm not one of those. Um, I'm short. It really, you know, I don't know. I guess it's all a matter of, you know, but. He had all these gorgeous women, but not one of them were his girlfriend. They were all his friends' girlfriends. But he carried them in his wallet to boost his ego and say, Hey, look at all the hot chicks I know. And then he'd be friends with them, you know. Oh, you know, whenever they got in a fight or something, you talk to your, you know, your best friend's, um, your, your guy's best friend, like that, you know. So it made him look good. He wasn't having any of these. It was his friend's girls. But, you know, when he's walking around or at the bar with this beautiful woman and she's talking about, you know, her boyfriend, his friend, and, and he looks like, wow, man, look at that guy with that hot chick. Ooh, he must got something there. That girl, you know. So this is why, you know, the arm candy, this is what I'm talking about. Have you ever felt like that in a relationship? I know I have. Um, when my son was in the hospital, okay, I'm going to really let you in on it. I mean, I've talked about Randy many times before, but I probably haven't told you really the details about Randy. Okay, well, some of those details. I told you he slept with his niece, so he committed incest. His his sister's um, daughter, he, he, he had sex with. His sister. Not half-sister. Not that that would matter. It would still be incest. But, I mean, they both share the same mother and father. All right. Alex was in the hospital fighting for his life. Um, he got stricken down with pneumococcal meningitis. He spent two years in the hospital. He couldn't walk. He couldn't talk. I mean... Go read my books or watch other videos where, you know, I tell you that he lost all his, most of his brain. He has the cognitive ability of like a two-year-old at best. He's an invalid and he lives, you know, he needs 24-7 care. When this happened, I was really at a very low, low, low spot in my life. Um, my father was, you know, mentally sick uh, in McLean 
he was in an institute. My son was in the hospital. And my marriage was really on the rocks um, at this time. Um, we weren't really getting along. Um, it was kind of like we, we separated for a week, too. It was like we were more roommates. You know, we weren't. We weren't even roommates. I mean, he'd leave. Yeah, I mean, we never even seen each other. We both leave the he'd leave the house at four and five in the morning, and I'd leave with Randy from the hospital after being in the hospital all day with my son. Randy would pick me up at the hospital at six thirty, and I'd stay out all night, climb in bed, go to sleep, and my and when I wake up, my husband's already left. So we weren't even roommates because we we didn't even cross paths at all at that time. We didn't even cross paths. Okay. Now, I was very, I'm going to, I'm not trying to be like conceited here. I was an attractive, much younger woman. I was like 33 or something. Very attractive, beautiful figure, you know, over 10 years younger than him. This was Randy. He was like 280 pounds, five foot six, so short. He had no teeth. I'm not kidding you. If you saw him, you would say, girl, what's wrong with you? You you all right? No education, high school diploma, nothing. He worked, he was a manager of a movie theater. But man, but managers of movie theaters aren't like uh, managers of like something else, <laughs> okay? They don't like a manager of CVS, a manager of a bookstore, a manager of a movie theater one movie theater, they don't make that much money at all. I think he was making like 40, 40 grand. I mean, my son makes more than that. He just got out of college. You know what I mean? It's just, and he was like, what was he, in his 40s? No teeth, obese. I mean, the guy was ugly. Think of Fred Flintstone. Uh, would you be attracted to Fred Flintstone? Now, here I was, you know, I had a very beautiful, petite figure. I was, you know, very attractive looking, and I was on his arm. I was arm candy to him. Now, you'd look at me and say, girl, what's wrong with you? Why are you with him? Because I wasn't mentally sound at that time. There's been times in my life I have not been mentally sound. Now, I've never been institutionalized. I've never been on a mental board. I never been on any drugs. I never, you know, um, you know, those drugs for I don't know, depression, anxiety, whatever it is that you go to a psychiatrist, they write out drugs. I've never been hospitalized. I've never been, you know, I never had a breakdown. I felt at certain times very close to a breakdown, but I never really had one. I felt very close to one. But I never been hospitalized for mental illness. Never in my life. Never took any kind of drug you know, prescription drug, or even recreational. I've never taken drugs. Unless you want to count Advil or Tylenol. Then I have. <laughs> um, oh, in high school, I was on diet pills for a very short time. Very, very, very short. But that, other than that. Um, of course, I was on clomiphene, too, for infertility, but that was prescription. So I guess I'm trying to I'm trying to say, wait a minute, that's not entirely true. And then I'm, I'm trying to be honest with you. And, you know, but you get my point. I was not mentally sound. Um, I was not in a good place. Um, I just needed someone at after spending all day with a comatose child in the hospital and my marriage falling apart, my father losing his mind and, and with schizophrenia uh, and I wasn't even speaking to my mother at that point and I had no friends at that point either um, I spent all my day in the hospital you know I didn't socialize he got me out of that place and when I was with him um, you know he took me out every single night you know every night after being in the hospital all day with my son, he took me out every night. And that's what it was. It was just an escape. It was an escape to be with him. But I'm sure I was eye candy to him. See, he was egotistical and thought, this, this chick, you know, let me take advantage of this woman. She's at a very low place in her life. Even my father said he was an opportunist. 
she's in a very low place place in her life and you know um it looks good he took me to a wedding a family wedding his cousin's wedding he took me to a family wedding you know because it made him look good that's what the narcissist does that's what i'm talking about arm candy they want to they they don't care about you they only care about how you make them look all right listen to what i just said they don't give a rat's ass about you okay all they care about is how you make them look okay so taking me to that wedding of course you know and showing me off this is my new my new girl you know they're gonna all look at him and go whoa randy how did you get her how did you land her whoa you must have something you must be good in bed you must got something because you don't got money you don't got looks you gotta have something so you see what i'm saying and this goes both ways all right i want to make that clear because i think some people think i only talk about men as narcissists no women are too like i mentioned they are, they go for the jock you know they go for the stud they go for that too so they can be on the guy's arm right and say mm. oh look at my husband you know i'm wearing minx and i've got this porsche you know and you know i go to the spa all day i don't have to work i go to the spa and you know i go to whatever macy's or whatever uh neiman marcus and buy you know whatever i want to 